name is Christian Petersen. I'm a technical operation manager in uh, VGTV in uh, Norway. Um, and we use uh, Final Cut uh, exclusively uh, for all of our operations. Uh, before we get to Final Cut, I just wanted to take you to some history about us, so you have some uh, context here. Uh, we started up in uh, 1945, uh, shortly after the uh, Second World War. It was uh, as a tabloid newspaper. Uh, it was actually started by uh, members of uh, the Norwegian resistance movements uh, during the Second World War. Um, we are we have been we are based in Oslo in uh, Norway. We have uh, local offices um, uh, many places in uh, Norway and also around the world. We are owned by Shipstead uh, Media Group, where we are actively cooperating with uh, them and the other members of uh, Shipstead on technical and also on content. So one of the um, major milestones in our operations was in, uh, back in 1995 when we uh, started up uh, what was then called VGNet, which uh, was our web page. It's the first time we had uh, uh, our own news site on the web. It um, very fast became the biggest uh, news website in uh, Norway. And uh, now we have uh, approximately 2.4 million daily unique visitors. And, and that's quite impressive for a country with uh, only a little more than 5 million uh, people. So we have um, four major departments, which is news, sports, documentary, and also entertainment. Uh, our history with um, video started in 1998, when we had our first video on the web. That was back in the days where video wasn't really practical on the web. The, um, internet wasn't really made for uh, that amount of streaming back then. In 2005, we uh, introduced the Final Cut and uh, a Exxon into our operations. Uh, that was the start of uh, what we have become today. That was when we started working, collaborating on shared storage, and uh, uh, Final Cut made us uh, uh, do things faster and more efficient uh, than ever. And um, with us, the, uh, what's really important for us is uh, speed and efficiency, because we are not a big operation. We, need, uh, we cannot throw loads of people on uh, projects. We need, uh, we need to be first, and we need to have uh, videos on our web page uh, very, very fast. So collaboration um, is very important, and Final Cut uh, with an Exxon helped us back then. In 2007, VGTV was formalized as a uh, company that uh, have dedicated employees for making uh, video for web. In um, 2013, we actually uh, started using Final Cut Pro. But in 2014, we also started our 24-7 linear uh, channel, which is based on uh, news, sports, and uh, uh, entertainment. Uh, documentaries uh, quite big there as well. Uh, in 2016, we started changing our um, uh, storage from um, Exxon and uh, other fiber-based systems to LumaForge uh, storage. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have uh, seven LumaForge uh, systems spread across the departments. They have been um, very important for us. And also in 2016, we started uh, uh, implementing our own custom uh, MOM system. Uh, when Final Cut Pro X was introduced in, uh, at NAB in 2011, I believe, we were sitting there uh, watching the presentation, and I was actually blown away. I, thought I just loved the magnetic timeline, and I finally something that are, is truly non-linear. Uh, so I loved it. Um, the day after, I viewed some messages on the forums and stuff, and uh, saw that not everybody was as happy as me. And of course, uh, as we soon discovered, there was a few things missing. Uh, so that's uh, probably why we didn't start using Final Cut um, uh, already back then. But the whole idea of the magnetic timeline was uh, very, very good. I, I, I really liked it. And fortunately, um, Apple had a lot of uh, rapid upgrades to Final Cut, so 
in uh, 2013, we, we just uh, went on with it, we uh, implemented it. We had um, one day, day of training for everybody. Next day, everybody was editing. Um, so it, it is um, important to notice that our um, uh, staff is uh, quite young. Uh, we have uh, also a lot of um, uh, hired people coming in all the time. So for us, uh, to have an editor that's really easy to learn, it's very important. And also, <coughs> of course, the speed is very important. FunCut Pro X on top of uh, LumaForge uh, storage uh, has helped us a lot there. Uh, at the moment, we have, uh, I believe, 16 uh, channels of uh, ingest. So we ingest 1080p material to our shared storage. We edit, edit on the growing files. So once there's a developing story, if we're not live with it, we can always bring clips out on our web uh, site very, very fast. And we have to make sure that uh, it also plays on our linear channel. So that's also, of course, been a little bit of a challenge. You have a progressive versus interlace and so on. Our solution is that everything we do is progressive. Um, we have, uh, for every source we get from others, we have a whole stack of Terranexes that are actually deinterlacing everything. So our house format is always uh, 1080 uh, progressive. The output for you always progressive? Yeah. So if we, if we play the play out, of course, the distribution and everything for normal brokers is always interlaced. So uh, for us, it's actually PSF. So uh, we play out progressive, but it ends up as PSF. Yeah. And it comes to Final Cut again, uh, the um, importance of um, a program that are fast, but also you can do everything in that program. You have uh, your uh, management of the files. You have uh, almost everything you need in. Uh, you can finish your whole project there. We use uh, motion for, uh, for graphics. So we have uh, templates in Final Cut with, uh, for all our departments. They just uh, put them in the timeline, and it's, uh, it's there. For training, uh, we, uh, as I told you, we have uh, had a one-day course for, uh, where everybody um, got an introduction to, to Final Cut, and uh, we really didn't have any issues after, after that. People uh, uh, liked it, so that was uh, really good. Now we have uh, a few power users, so whenever there's new stuff, they are training them. A little bit about our workflow, because um, uh, what we very much do is that, uh, especially for sports, um, there we have, we have a collaboration with uh, Discovery. So uh, every day we produce up to five uh, sports news f that runs on the Euro uh, channel for Discovery. And uh, those uh, news and also I think it's three uh, weekly episodics <coughs> we produce for, for them. They run all on Eurosport and they also run on our channel on, and also on the web. So uh, from time to time, we need to have uh, yeah, different versions of uh, the same uh, clip. Uh, so we use the role system in Final Cut to do that. So whenever you have a edit, you put in your graphics and your sound and everything, you assign roles to your different uh, uh, clips and graphics. So that when you uh, go to the export, we can actually make separate files in one go. I, I get to that, but our next step after assigning roles is that we do, we use uh, TC Electronics um, LM2 for loudness uh, control, uh, so that uh, all the clips have uh, approximately the same level. Most of our clips end up on the web, uh, so that's minus six, 16 the uh, loves which is the EBU recommendation for, for web, because your small iPhone or your little laptop have uh, small speakers, uh, minus 23 is just not loud enough. So minus 16 is what we standardize on there. And when we do the export, for example, for discovery, we have an automated system that makes minus 23 for, for that. That's just handled in our MOM system, so the user won't uh, 
see it. Uh, but minus 16 is uh, like uh, where approximately you should be for, um, for web. And then uh, once we've done the, um, we of course use a broadcast limiter and, uh, and for fixing uh, things that are outside of uh, the range. Once you have uh, your edit done and your loadness and everything, you put in the metadata in, um, in Final Cut at the, in the export window. Those metadata, like the title, description, creator, tags and everything, we bring along as extended attributes. Uh, they are in the file, so you don't need a XML to do that. You, we just read the uh, metadata directly from the file. So once you put it in a watch folder for our MAM system, it reads the file and the met metadata and collects them and make them searchable and, and so on. So that's a very, very uh, efficient and, uh, and simple uh, workflow. And uh, simplicity is a key word for us here. Uh, next thing is that uh, once you have uh, your edit done, you have uh, all your graphics, uh, uh, sound and everything in place, uh, we also export in the same go as we, for example, we have our master file with graphics, we have another master file in another format for discovery with uh, maybe some uh, another set of graphics. We also make what we call a clean version. That's a version without any of the graphics on top. If there's, for example, speak on it, then it's always the sound channels are separated, so you always have the possibility to take away stuff like speak that you might need to change. So that file is always archived with uh, the master files in the MAM system. So we found that this is the easiest and uh, way to reuse uh, clips. Once we have them in the MAM system, uh, if you are searching for a news story for, for, from back uh, whenever, once you, you have found it, you can actually download the clean version. You can take away the speak that you don't need if there's uh, some other soundtracks and you don't have the, the graphics on top because they, they might have changed and uh, everything. So you have that as well as the master files. Uh, so once you've done that, there's just a bundled uh, export in, in Final Cut, so there's just one uh, setting with all the three formats uh, you export. And then you put that you export to a watch folder, and it's uh, suddenly inside the MAM system uh, with all the metadata in place. It reads uh, all the extended attributes, and it also uh, reads all the info about the video formats and the file itself. And you can search up and you can find it, you can uh, watch uh, proxies, uh, and you can uh, deliver it to all sorts of uh, destinations that we have. For example, you can send it to, this, to the storage you're on. Uh, if you're on a share station in the sports uh, department, you just say send to share station and it's on that share station. So, very efficient. You can put it in, in our live system, our play out system, and publish it to web directly from, from our MAM system. We also have some m smaller, we have some players actually built into the MAM system, so you can drop files that uh, we are sports play out, for example, which is a sports news looping. Just drag a file over there and it starts looping. So, simplicity. That is my presentation about how we are using Final Cut. And uh, I think uh, for us, uh, the biggest reason for switching to, to Final Cut Pro X uh, was the simplicity. It's this, and then we discovered the speed, which nobody is uh, even close to, if you ask me. In our tests, it's uh, the export. Very often, if you're out in the field editing on a MacBook Pro, you need to export a H.264 for fast uploads and stuff. Uh, that's things that can take ages in uh, other systems. It's very, very fast in Final Cut Pro X because of the GPU acceleration and, and so on. So very, very e efficient. So we um, very much like it because of that and the fact that we can actually have new staff. We can have journalists sit down with them for uh, 
few hours and they are actually editing. So, and that's what editing is actually all about. It's about telling a story, not fiddling with technical issues. So we, um, yeah, we like it. Thank you very much. <laughs>